Look at that beer flow. Well, not really. Oh, we'll there see. it is. Ooh, ooh, it's, it it's might happening. be happening. Oh, look at that. <gasps> you see, I like what it. The... Beer pre- where, where did that beer creations come what from? The... Josh! Has it always been there? It's exquisite. So it's cool. exquisite. It's a life changing. It's so cool. It's a life changing introduction. I, I think that I we're all very pleased with it. Um, hello. Uh, it is I, uh, your internet friend, Jeffrey K. Horcrims. Um, however, it came to be, uh, you have found yourself ass backwards uh, in Twitch's brewing show, Acquisitions ass Intoxicated. Ass backwards. Um, yeah, it's exactly right. What is its purpose, you ask? Mm. Why? Why do it? Why do it at all? It seems like a weird thing to do. Um, it might be. Um, Not really. But, I, I think it's great. I, I'm, it, I'm really looking forward to Tuesdays in quarantine. But it provides, I mean, it does yeah. provide a rhetorical framework that enables noontime drinking. And so, of course, we have to, we yeah, have to appreciate like, that. Yeah. We, we, it's just a great excuse. We would have it, probably did it anyway. It's, but it's a great film. No, <laughs> this is, anyone else... A drunkard, a ne'er do well, a yeah, vagabond, yeah, yeah. A, a blackguard, a highwayman, Ooh. us artisans, artisans, creative. artisans. Like it's just exactly right. Now, um, as I was suggesting, what is its purpose? I know perfectly well what it is. As do you, if you have joined us before. Uh, it is to uh, reveal and give unto you that which you already know. It's yard and science brewing. Yay! Uh, I am joined as almost always. Uh, by Acquisitions Intoxicated Brewmaster Eric J. Benson, uh, also known as The Edge, also known as the Notorious EJB, also known as Azerbaijan. Um, one time. But, I, but we've been, it's a ritual we've maintained for multiple years now, even after one, um, one utilization. Yes, a yeah. rogue, a Ryan rogue, exactly. A rogue definitely in that continuum as well. Um, mm. Of course, um, you know, obviously those who have, those longtime enthusiasts are perfectly aware that uh, we adhere very closely to uh, the arc of the hero's journey on this program. Um, very, very scholarly uh, uh, Twitch stream. We should put this, put the scholarly uh, tag in there, Josh, if you could. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna elevate the proceedings a little bit. So, um, but it is our task, of course, to to entertain you. Now, historically, I should we are going to deviate from the hero's journey in one very slight way, and that wow. is because, Wait, wow. and that wow. is because um, we are literally out of vessels to brew into. <laughs> I know, right? Um, like, this so, is a be- this is a beautiful problem to have. Absolutely, uh, Pookie man. Thank you so much, uh, and of course, uh, Cab Bah Humbug. Welcome aboard. Now, um, it should be said that. Um, it is be- it is only because the show has been blind Claire, thank you. It is it's only because the show has been so productive um, that that we run into this very good problem. Because among other things, what it means is that we have on the order of twenty gallons or so <laughs> of yeah. beer. Yeah. I mean, what all? Go down the roster, Eric. I mean, because you've you've been there. Nice. That's it. Ooh, <laughs> but, but I see it. But I think but, he's mad. I think he's mad. No, no. It's, he's like, listen. I understand that you're infringing on my IP. This is, I know this is common on Twitch, but now yeah. it's personal. <laughs> now, it's, uh, now we're bringing it on. Exactly. No. So it's like this. It, it could be, he could be trying to get a hold of you for some kind of collab. Right. We don't, like, we shouldn't cool. assume we don't know. It's a, we shouldn't assume it's a negative thing. Jinjing, thank you so much. But no, I mean, so what do we have that needs to be transferred or is in process right now? I mean, go down the roster. Right? Ed, do you want to answer this for me? No, no, he's, he, he, no. He, he, he's, he's not, not ready. He's not ready. He's not ready for it. So the first one we have is Red Rock Blaster. Yes. Which I'll bring up. This is awesome. This was the cherry paleo that we did. And so you, you were able to stuff uh, uh, a cherry so, uh, we, uh, like a we compote used, or something, right? It's like a, a puree, actually. Puree. Yeah. We would use. Um, so that gets put in during secondary fermentation. Um, and it's almost ready to be done. It's actually in the uh, free, uh, fridge now getting carbonated. How does it smell? Um, amazing. Uh, it should. Um, what's, <laughs> the funny part about it was that was the Chris Straub foaming episode. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, so there was some volume loss. Yeah, yeah. So we lost a lot of volume on it. It's probably about a gallon and a half that's left. 
I mean, out of the two and a half gallons. So, but, uh, so um, factoring in uh, how much cherries we had to put in, we'll see, we'll see what it, it's probably going to taste very cherry at this point. Yeah. It's going to get cranked up. It's going to yeah. be that, um, that lifesaver. Yeah. Which I think is, is going to be pretty neat. I activity. I, I it, yeah. Oh my gosh. And cold tires is also in there, right? Cold tires is the Kolsch that we did. And I have been digging Kolsch's um, a lot lately. Um, I actually brought one today to try out. Um, oh, nice. From Commuter, which is a, a Bainbridge Island brewery. No lie. Yeah. No, no. So you're a New York boy. I mean, have you have you been out to Bainbridge since you moved over here? No. And I've been wanting to go. Everybody talks about it. And I'm like, this, this actually, I lied. I have been to Bainbridge for an SCA event. They hold a big SCA. Oh, event. God, I bet they do. Yeah. But, I but, bet but, they do. But that's the, as for, like, as much as I've been able to explore, I haven't been to go to like shops or any of the breweries or anything else that's out there. There's some, there is some hot shit out there for yeah. sure. It's, it's real. It reminds me a little bit of salt spring in yeah. some ways yeah, okay. uh, up Canada way. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously uh, the, the Huel melon, basically it's a Kolsch, but it's got some, it's got some work done under the hood. Well, remember we put honey and wheat in this beer. Yeah. Cold and tires is going to be effed. Yeah, it's going to be super sweet. From um, but that is going to have mega head retention. Yeah, and crisp and really clean, which is yeah, which is so much fun. Which is what we like from a, a lager, right? Exactly. Um, so I cannot. Oh yeah, and you're 100 percent from the Huel Melon. That is going to add some really nice fruit flavors into the mix. Yeah, it's going to be surprising in that style. I think. Yeah, and I am I'm 100 percent behind that. Um, the next one one was Icewind Ale. This. I am freaking excited for syrup on boil. Yes. Remember we put, we used Munich malt as our base. Then we put in some Maris Otter special roast to give us a little bit of toffee and coffee. Um, right. Real, and then, you, and then you goose the color with the uh, caramel crystal, right? Yep. Yeah, the caramel crystal, but we also put maple syrup into the boil and remember cinnamon on the back end. Yeah, yeah. Icewind Ale, so we're basically, it's our version of a winter, you know, of like a, like a winter ale. I, the, I have a winter ale here from Elysian, oh, is, cool. is mine today. But remember, like the, uh, the narrative hook is that everybody from the 10 towns is all throwing something in. Yeah, exactly. It's essentially a beer made by committee, but the committee is, <laughs> ordinarily, that would be a bad thing. But in this, it's like a committee of people who are like, we need to make something that's going to get us through this. Um, it's a, a collaboration on a, a life-saving material. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and so what else you got in there? Um, the I mean, next it, it, one yeah. is 666 edition, which is right. the Schwartz beer we did for Todd Kenrick. That's right. For his Warlock, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, look at the build on this. Like this just makes me happy for a Schwartz beer because it was Munich, Victory Malt, and Black Pat. And a little bit, Yeah. Not much. Not much. Just a fraction, a not quarter much. of a of a pound. Yeah, and I'm not. Even, I'm not sure we've used that lager. I'm not sure we've used that particular yeast either. Lager X. No, we have. Yeah. You know. Um, but we came in with the tet at the mm -hmm. back, uh, right which, on top, which is going to give us that spice and earthiness. We do. It's going to be really earthy good. spice, if you will. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but, 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 but that's we will be spelling uh, selling soon. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But also, um. But I mean, that doesn't even include the ones that have been lagering since the before times. No, I cannot tell you how excited I am for In for a Penny. This yeah. was the Dunkel that we did for the 21st anniversary of Penny Arcade. Um, right. And it has been lagering since quarantine. Right. And we just passed the 22nd anniversary. Holy crap. You, you know what I mean? Exactly. I'm yeah. saying that it has, it's been in there for a while um it's it's those are going to be legendary things and so is the fantasy scenario that you're able to do a transfer on those tanks and then carbonate I mean, the issue right now is we have no more tanks right yeah but i don't want like so i mean that beer that's a beer mike is gonna love so right. i don't i don't want to do that beer, i don't want to open that beer without like that's like that was designed for him as well because it's a dunkle right it's it's sweet it's it's candy flavored it's like there, there are they're all the right flavor palettes it's for all uh, yeah so, I mean, I think that, I mean, we could wait on that one. I don't, I mean, it's lagering. You can, you can log it back. Yeah, around. absolutely. But there's at least one more back there still going, right? Yeah. So is it, it's, I can't remember which one it is. 
I don't know if it's um, the golden uh, one we did for our friend that uh, helped out with Child's Play. Oh, it is. It is. that. It's that thief one that we did. Gold coin, I think, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, stolen, co stolen gold. Stolen gold, yeah. Yep. So that's a keeper. And then, of course, Ryan's wine is in there oh, as God, well. Yeah, that's going to be a trip. Right? I mean, that's anyway. So it's it's those. It's fine if they age. It's okay for yeah. them. To oh, age. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, yeah, we gotta we gotta start drinking these so we can get back into the cycle. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that's all good. And so, but but that's why we have to deviate somewhat from the hero's journey because yeah. uh, raw vessels. I mean, and there's three. Are, are there, is there three right now that are fermenting in your in your apartment? There's three fermenting and one carbonating. Jesus. Yeah. So this is a this is the danger zone. It's like Kenny Loggins has a song. Yeah, about my kitchen. About your kitchen. Yeah. With, you know, in which what? About 14 gallons of beer are are basically on on the route. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Samotep says apart from the lack of storage space what happens if you leave these to ferment or carbonate too long carbonation actually hits a certain threshold the 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 liquid can't hold any more carbon mm -hmm. and so the tank i mean basically the the tank is pressurizing that vessel the beer is absorbing the co2 it hits a point where there isn't any more Right. And the truth is, we we would much rather have CO two on top of it inside the tank. Exactly. Than we would air. Yep, a hundred percent. Right. We have, we don't we don't want to oxidize. Right. You mm -hmm. don't want your beer to oxidize. No, we want we want to make sure that we're controlling that process end to end. In fact, with the older beers out there, it's an issue right now. We would want to transfer it away from the goop and stuff in the bottom yeah. before we tried to get it ready to drink anyway. Right. So there's a process in there. Right. Um, uh, Lane Winry says, hey, so with Pico Brew having gone under and assuming it's impossible to get a Z, it's it's not impossible to get a Z. I feel confident someone will sell you a Z. Yep. Um, are, there other, are there other automated brew systems that can fill a corny keg? Yes. Asking for a friend who just got an outdoor kitchen with kegerator. Ooh, ooh. Well, Absolutely. That's cool. One of the, there's a couple of them that you can look at. One that I've been eyeing with utter jealousy is called an Anvil. And there are two versions. There's a $300 version and a $500 version, both fully automatic, both come with um, cooling pumps, which the Pico didn't. No. Um, and what, one does five gallon batches, one does 10 gallon, or one does two and a half, one does five gallon batches. And if you felt like distilling, you could distill on it as well if you bought the extra parts. Yeah, yeah. So um, that is a really great base way to spend not a lot of money to get some automated brewing. And it can fit on your countertop, which is yeah. amazing. Now Literally. the anvil, the anvil system that I saw basically looks like a scaled down production system. Exactly. But but Lane, the main thing is that no matter what, whenever you are after you've finished your beer and you're ready to uh, get it into a serving keg to carbonate, any brew system, it it, it doesn't care. Now the thing that's weird about the Z is that it uses a corny as a kettle. Yeah. That's the odd part about it. But any one of these systems transferring beer into a corny keg and pressurizing it, that's going to be normal no matter what system you're yeah, using. Yeah, and it takes two seconds. Yeah, um, it's a, a little siphon, and then it basically you know transfer all of it. There's a, a couple quick motions, uh, and then it goes up. Right. Yeah, Lane. Yeah, this is. I was just going to say. I mean, obviously, Eric is a is uh you know on the master brewer continuum. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, that's the one that he has been looking at, and yeah, the price the price is the price is right as they yeah. say. There's also the grandfather, which is about a thousand bucks. But really, the main difference between the two is just that you can use an app with the grandfather. Yeah, and and for the one that I like, but again, not as experienced, and so you know, I'm obviously looking for more training wheels. Mm. I thought the brewery is kind of cool. The brewery is kind of cool. I mean, it is, it is great, but it's, it's uh, th that again, your that's your next stratosphere of it's 2000 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Like the thing that makes it is that that's, that's more along, that's more of like a direct lateral Pico replacement. A hundred percent. In that it's trying to be an appliance yep. as opposed to a tool. Um, but there's, a, but you know, automation exists in a range right, right now. 
uh, right. for the home brewer. Um, yeah. But right, what, what they've what they have said in terms of the Z is that, uh, or, or the entire Pico Brew range of products is that they'll be available for the foreseeable future. But there are open source projects out there to spoof uh, the master server, uh, mm -hmm. and it'll give you some some features you might not even have had with the real product. So, yep. yes. Lane Winry says, after Pico, I'm a little gun shy about brewing systems living in the cloud. Well, yeah. And then when Google has a problem yeah. uh, with their cloud services, you find out how many products, you find out how much of your life is connected to that shit. Mm. It's pretty real. You find out very quickly. Yeah. Now, um, so uh, we will begin the process because we're not going to do the device. Uh, we'll begin the process with the, the tasting phase. Why don't you yeah. go into this, this Kolsch? So Kolsch you know, etymologically is pretty cool. The end. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I mean, man, I was, I was expecting a lot. I mean, I, I thought well, the setup, the volume, the tone in your voice, well, like it was, I, I was yeah, bracing. For exactly. You, you, you'd you seen like the high point of the curve. Yeah. No, no. It just etymologically, it just means from Cologne. Yeah. So like Seattleite. Yeah. Well, and you know what was funny? Um, Micro Homebrew, when I was down there getting grains yesterday, they had a 50 pound bag of cologne grains for 50 bucks, which is insane. Well, that's like, ridiculous. Yeah. Usually it's like 80, like it, the prices are. Oh, they're trying to, they're trying to move product. I, I should, I should say that um, to Omidar and Natty D's, obviously, thank you so much for the, yeah. the subscription. Um, but they don't give much information about this. It's um, five percent, which I really like. It's not a high ABV beer. Um, they, they tend not to be. But they said, uh, "Don't miss the boat on our traditional German style Kolsch. Okay, fermented, cool, and lagered for maximum clarity and a bright, clean, refreshing taste. Very generic, very great. But brewed in honor of those rain huddled masses." <laughs> whose daily lives revolve around the fairies and who can oh. be found uh, each workday uh, stoically in the same seat. Raise a, <laughs> raise a can with us in toast. Victory to the fairy terriot. Nice. Here. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's a lot Another of Bainbridge. Story. There's a lot of Bainbridgeism yeah. in that here. I need to go get a glass. I don't actually know yeah. what Bifrost. I, I have Elysian's Bifrost. Oh, you got the Bifrost? It's, I like it. I thought I mean, it was a good beer. Well, I was just going to say, but I've never actually seen it out of the bottle. So I'm going to go grab yeah, a glass. Yeah, up. totally. So let's check this out. Um, I'm expecting, well, if if I could show you the top of it, it's already foaming out the top. So that's a great sign. But it is clear, crisp. Actually, this has a really nice um, pale golden color. So look at that, or if you can see it, right? Uh, uh, uh. Straw's not taking it away, but yeah. Uh, Straw's not taking it away. God, I can't get a good, there we go. Oh, hey friends. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Oh, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, I was gonna, oh, oh my look at the, lord. Look at the color on that beer. Dude, check this dramatic glassware. Yeah, right? Jesus. That, dude, that is lovely. Yeah. Absolute zero. Thank you so much. Yeah, the elixir keeps going transparent. Yeah, I know. Um, but that is, it's a fantastic Kolsch. Um, just clean and crisp and all of the, the flavors you, you'd expect. That's what um, we like. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's nothing out of the ordinary for the style, but. Yeah, see, I, I, like, I think that, you know, I think that there's some value in, like, I think a Kolsch would actually be a very good sort of calibration yeah, like as a as something to make, like executing a classic style perfectly is right. not is non trivial. No, right? No, absolutely. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Resisting the urge to fuck with it, I think, is probably <laughs> like staying your hand 
yeah. as a brute. Like that's the mark of wisdom. Right. Yeah. It's like discretion is the better part of valor, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's like we are, this is the thing. And the, and the, the channel obviously has joined us in this, this task as well. Yeah. They, um, they don't go nuts every time they go nuts in specific places. Yes, exactly. Right. 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 So Bifrost winter ale tend yeah. to be a little bit higher ABV. Check it out. I really, I enjoyed this and I don't know if this was made pre or post their sale, but yeah, here I was going to say, um, Bifrost I has been re- around forever. Yeah. Um, it was one of the first winter ales I had coming here. Yeah. Citrus, earthy hop character. Well, that's a, that's a great combo. Smooth malt backbone. Well, I'll be the judge of that illusion. Bring it up so close. Ooh, look at the, oh, the great color. Oh, what a delight. It's very winter warmery. That is solid. Honestly, I think, I think that this is a very stable, I think that this would be a good, for me, this would be a good second beer. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause the, because the, like the ABV spike, I don't mm-hmm. think that, um, I don't think that the malt is sufficient in this to, to, um, accommodate the ABV. <laughs> um, Oh, you're, good, say, you're you're saying the the ABV like the twinge is there like the it's, it's too yeah it's too hot um, really well but but they they changed they change their recipes all the time yeah, like space dust cool. used to used to be sort of a showcase for some marquee hops right and kind of a cool build the modern version of space dust is not that way I don't want right. to be that much of a fancy pants um, no but, but, but a, I I remember one of our first chats and you're like have you had space dust yet and I'm like no I haven't and you're like oh god we got to go get space dust we got to go down there yeah but then exactly. it, then it, then it then it changed now there is a there is a, a version of this that I think yeah the blue dot um from hair of the dog obviously oh, that's yeah. a, it's a it's a, a double IPA yes. but uh digital punch and pie thank you the thing about the thing about um, Blue Dot is that it has crazy, IP, you know, it has crazy ABV, mm-hmm. you know, like this, this like stern winter ale here, right? Yeah. The difference is that the is that they haven't spared any expense on the body of it. Yeah. And so you can, I mean, they have two beers like this that you can drink, and then if you are into this shit you just it's paralytic basically the taste is so complicated yeah um that think- you have that you basically have to chew it for a while <laughs> they have that and my favorite my favorite beer of all time is actually from hair of the dog which is called doggy claws doggy the, claws i don't know if i've seen that the only thing it's fucked man um they had it at a really cute uh little uh pub by where I used to live called, um, I think it's called the Dre. Yeah, I remember the Dre. Yeah, yeah, we, I took you there. Yeah, yeah, um, this is great. No, so the Dre had, um, they had that for a while there. And so it's yeah. like every day when I'd come home from work, I'd like, it was like three blocks from my house. So I'd park right. my car. And then before I would go in the house, I would go over there. Ah! And I was actually there. I got a glass of it every day until the keg was gone. I, this never happened to me before. Yeah, but it, it was like it was like I had found a secret spring or something. It right. was ridiculous. But it's it is the most complicated. The only thing, the only beer, in my opinion, that I've ever had that even approaches that level of just mind stopping complexity is right. Doomgate Dark Wine. Ooh. And that was part of the purpose of Doomgate Dark Wine. God, that that was a phenomenal barley wine, right? But and, and we we let it sit. I mean, it's yeah, gonna be, we, didn't, it's gonna... we didn't we didn't mess around with it, right? We were we we weren't gonna like, oh, we're gonna tap this early because we we just want to drink it. We yeah. literally let that sit for six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lane Winry, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I remember it. I don't think I made it up. I I think that it used to actually incorporate like they called it space dust because it was like galaxy hops and like some weirdo oh, shit. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, Chaotic Brutal says, Hair of the Dog's Barley Wines are God tier. Yeah. Yeah. It is an Alix here. Are they based out of Oregon? Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
CC Nowhere says Doggy Claws was the first craft beer I ever had. Well, yeah, what a fucking way to start your career. Jesus, well, jumped what's, up. What's Christ. really interesting about like Hair of the Dog and making it, what would you say it was Blue Spot and the other ones? Um, Blue Dot. is the, it's, Blue uh, Dot. It's, it's only sold in Bombers, as I know. Yeah. So, yeah, because I remember I got a couple for one of our writing nights. But um, Jesus. in Ireland, you could only, there's this Irish whiskey, and it's called Yellow Spot, Blue Spot, Green Spot. Really? There's the, the different spots and they're all just different colors. You typically could never get it out of Ireland. So I'd always have friends bring some back. Yeah. And it was, it's some of the best Irish whiskey you can find, but I think you can actually get it stateside now. These um, days. I, I, yeah. I just think it's funny that they're, you know, blue spot, yellow, yellow dot, you know, like I'm they're, they're playing off the, um, <clears throat> I support it 100%. Now. Um, so what we need at this point is we need a cool theme. Yeah. So I feel I am incredibly pleased with, um, oh, that's ABV Club, of course. Also yeah. the ice beer. Um, I, I'm incredibly pleased with the essential oil that we came up with for I the mode run. A, yeah, I think it's a really neat idea. Yeah, um, that is. Look at everything. Uh, look we at, put into look it. at this fucking build. Um, you know, Maris Otter, classic. That is going to give us a great base taste. Uh, right. We also put some two row just to balance it out. Right, right. But, but because it's such a son of a bitch ABV wise, like we got to put sugar straight in. Yeah. Right. Sugar, table sugar, but we have victory malt in there, some crystal for the color. Um, and it's going to give it a little bit Baked of caramel. Barley. barley. Jesus H. Christ. But um, I can't remember who, who put it in. I think it might have been Orion that talked about Mount Hood. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great hop to throw into this. No, it's going to be it's going to be a plus. But yeah. <clears throat> and then the Yorkshire Ale going to be smooth, little mm -hmm. fruit notes. Yeah, oof, it's going to be strange in exactly the right way. Yeah, because it's oil for these Modrons. I, I no, it's love good. It. I, I, I'm, I'm just about that. all I am saying, precious chat, is that we have done well. Very recently, can we do it again? I say yes. Mm. Um, but of course we need good themes. Yeah. What should we, what should we take on? Right. I what mean, honestly, like these, these, on? these, this, uh, last run has been really, really neat. Like yeah. th that, that, you know, here a couple years in, there's still, um, there's still so much headroom in the artifact beer space. Right. Yeah. You know what we haven't done and I don't know if we want to do it, but we've never done a dark sun. Anything related to Dark Sun? Well, I, I think that's why we ate those bugs. Was it? I, I is that not why? I think we ate. I think that Josh, Dark Josh, gave us can after can of bug, so that we could, um, so that we could like get the right bugs for oh, brewing. Yeah, you're right. You know what? You're you're 100 right. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Oh yeah, Tobias. Uh, anything God. Brewdog puts out, I'm 100 percent behind. I had I had a bottle of Tactical Nuclear Penguin. Yeah. Um, and Sync the Bismarck. Um, I think I've mentioned this on stream before, but uh, they're one of their two highest ABB stump beers. One Tactical Nuclear Penguin is 32 percent, and Sync the Bismarck is higher. But they send you, if you buy Sink the Bismarck, it's like 150 bucks. They send it to you in a squirrel that they found on the side of the road that's been taxidermy that looks like this. And they shove the beer down its throat. It's hilarious. You own this? That, that's how they used to send it. Okay. I don't know if they still do it now. fucking percent. So. Yowza. Yowza. Yes, exactly right, Tobias. Now. <clears throat> but we do need yo it was it was a spell jammer dark sun yeah okay yeah we do need some uh some theme so uh theme question mark exclamation point that's where uh... we're at tobias is saying a jesus themed beer i think is the is the suggestion <laughs> that i can see here in the chat <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we are just technically turning water into wine, so. That's true. That's true. We're do so we're doing the Lord's work. If, yeah. If a court of cups. A court of cups would be in a vampire mm -hmm. uh, vibe. Yep. 
Um, oh no, yeah, no barbecue chicken crickets. Uh, what a else? savory, sensible beer, a, a savory sen- sessional beer without hops. Oh, we, we, we've done, we've done a couple of like, groots and things like that. Yeah, God, Madra, you could do a cyberpunk. You could do a cyberpunk beer. My guess I, is I, that I, a I lot of the it. cyberpunk beers, yeah, is, is that they would actually it would be different fermentables. Yeah, I actually actually I talked to their marketing person. I'm like, hey, if we do a cyberpunk beer, would you be okay with that? They're like, yeah, absolutely. So, um, but let's let's wait on the cyberpunk beer. I'm gonna and, put it in the list though, so that um, we can come right back to it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, a healing elixir. Now that is a good idea, especially like heading into the new year. Mm-hmm. I know that yesterday, obviously, Washington State's, um, you know, mRNA vaccines were delivered. Oh, were they? Very cool. <laughs> yes. Guava Papa. Thank you so much. I think that I- I'm prepared just to move into that. Yeah. But, just, but, but, let's do a, but, what, let's do a healing a, potion. Let's, like, like a healing? Yeah. Right? We've literally never done a healing potion let's or any potions. Do... Like we've never done a line of the different potions of D and D. Yeah, I mean potion of extra healing, right? Great. Yeah. Well, you could, but blind cleric. Obviously, the spell absolutely would be the. I mean, that would be the way that you could do it. But if we're going to try to execute a, um, if we're going to try to lean in and execute a potion as a beer, I say potion of extra healing. That's like the the gold standard basically um, for that. Oh, movies, I'm so glad that you liked the comic. Yeah, I, I was I was very surprised to be contacted by the state of Washington um, yeah, that was real cool. about making a comic to promote. I mean, the, the, can, I can't even imagine what the conversation must have been like there, right? And because it's basically like, um, God, we need to, we need to get a hold of these these gamers. We, these we need to get a hold of. <laughs> yeah, what was what was that thing? Uh, Gamesors. We we need to we need to make sure that the elite uh, are inside the circle. Yes, I say. Here, listen. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna call it. I'm gonna say we're gonna do a potion of extra healing. We're gonna take blind cleric suggestion and lean in to the next one. Now, technically, you know, should it be actually cure disease? Maybe. You know, maybe, but uh, let's do potion of extra healing. And the truth is, I mean, obviously in my mind, I think of it as red, but that's from Diablo. There's no reason to, there's no reason to say that a potion of extra healing should be the same color as a health bar. Right. Otherwise. But yeah, no, that's true. But like, let's say we do. It can be anything. Sure. So, but I mean, one easy one is an uh, uh, Irish red. Absolutely. Beer to put there, right? Exactly um, right. Let's talk about other kinds of beers that are fulfilling and hearty and. Um, yeah, yeah, because basically it's gonna it's going to we have to figure out like which side of this thing we want to hit, right? Yeah. Is the idea that it is hearty and wholesome, or are we are we gonna lean into the the mystical aspects of it in terms of the like the hop flavor profile, yeast approach, right? Mm-hmm. We're um, trying. Everybody's trying movies. It's a these are effed times for sure. Uh, hey, Alex you, King apparently used to drink Irish red ale exclusively. But you could do really, like, yeah, Killian's. I mean, you can do I mean, so much worse. Killian's was like one of my first beers. Exactly. Getting into it, just a lot it of like, people. It wasn't. It was available. It wasn't. Uh, we hadn't it, hit mass craft beer stage. It wasn't yet, an and, American lager, right? Yeah. Which is like most of what you can get. Right, and I felt I felt cool. I'm like, oh, I'm drinking Killian Irish Red, blah blah blah. You know, you know what I mean? Like it was just exactly. So I think, I think we got to think hard about it. I mean, in my mind, what what are your thoughts on a wheat? I I feel like wheats are refreshing and cool. Wheat, and... wheat is mega hearty, for sure. It's like a wheat ale. Yeah, just a wheat ale. Like for exactly. some reason, and the truth is, we can always um, we can build it any way we want. We can come at it with a crazy yeast and go nuts. But there's Flemish reds, right? Like there's weird stuff. There's stuff that I wouldn't like. So the main thing we have to figure out, since we're discussing like the manufacturing of an artifact, mm-hmm. 
beverage, right? Yep. The main thing we have to figure out is does a healing potion actually taste good? Or is it like that horrible or, cherry? Or is, is it paint? like when your mom gives you it's like when she comes in with um fucking what was that awful shit? Yeah, like like my mom used to give me like Robitussin. Or, yes, you know, like um, Pepto Bismol, or some people like. Yeah, Pepto-Bismol. yeah, yeah. Is is a in my mind, I think I've always thought of a of a healing potion as tasting sweet and good. See, for in is my it mind, possible I'll, that you drink this to save your life, and you wouldn't drink it under any other circumstances? In my, in my mind, in my fantasy, a, a, a healing potion is the sweetest fish, but that's my fantasy. But you're right. It could be horrible, and well, you have to stomach it. What to, were you to... saying? I was reading. I was reading uh, Aramahus's uh, indication oh. of the sub. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, diamond tap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I heard. I heard the back end. So two things. Um, in my mind, in my fantasy. Vix. Oh God, Vix. Remember Vix? Oh no! It, it juxtaposed. It does not need to taste like Nyquil. Oh. That, oh God. Okay. This is Eric. This is. A million times more is- interesting than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, cool." I mean, obviously, we have to check that box, right. right? We have to get through some of these classic potions for sure. This is a million times more interesting because this is going to retroactively. Every time I drink a potion like that, and every time I have had one in the past as a character to save my yeah. life, yeah, it's never once occurred to me that it would taste awful. Right? I you you'd always think, I it think good. I think it tastes really fucking bad. I I think that that is actually correct. I bet that this shit tastes terrible. And I'm not saying that we have to make a bad beer. I no, am saying but, that there's what, something what, I'm saying that there is something in this yes. that is rough. Right. Yeah, right? no no, and, it's, it's and, just, and Josh is right because we're talking about really bitter root infused medical concoction so we're talking about something like a tincture we're talking about triple ipa right we are talking it's, about it's gonna... something like a tincture that triple ipa is going to have high yes. abv Lane. and that means that any Congrats. additions we put in are going to be extracted yeah right i think that's cool so put triple ipa on the list or double yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know what but but look i mean uh, going back to the spruce tips <laughs> Um, no, Legend 70 is like, no, it has to heal your, um, you know, it has to heal your psyche yep. um, as well as your body. So make it taste like heaven. Yeah. I don't know. Guava Papa says I should have CBD. <laughs> I mean, Why wouldn't that. it? Yeah. Why wouldn't it? Because you know, like that hardcore, like that tank, right? That warrior, that pally. Yeah. yeah. You know that, that their retirement is spent sipping this. Yeah. They're still oh, doing God. it. They're, they're drinking gritted. shots of it. Think about it. They're like gritted. They're thinking about the old the chair, times. By the fire. They're just uh, just chugging one more but, like but shot they're thinking, it down. But they're yeah. thinking, and this is the sad part, right? Yeah, like that, sword in hand and no, mug in the other. Eric, this is the worst part about it. They are at full HP. Yeah, but they're still drinking it. It doesn't matter. Son of a B. Talk about dependence, yeah. Yeah. Turmeric. Now you're talking Scarlet. Oh, Rainbow interesting. Wolf. Okay. Yeah, there are some really, really nice turmeric. The, the kombucha. I mean, in the before times, um, the uh, the kombucha that we had in the the fridge in the break room at PA, was yeah, was a turmeric uh, kombucha, and it was about right. It was about right. Yeah, there we go. Ginger. Yeah, no, I, I honestly, I think that Josh has led us down a very cool road here. I like the ginger. I really dig ginger. Well, ginger, is, ginger is a, a traditional medicinal, medicinal herb too. But do you think, it, like, let's say, let's say it goes towards a more triple IPA? Is the ginger going to get drowned out by the bitterness of the hops? No, no, because because it's spicy. That's true. Right? It'll actually, it will be there. At the right level, but see, ginger will be a way for us to make a spicy beer that isn't in the the the, the pepper continuum. Right, right? it's right. a different kind of spice. Eric, this is a thousand times more interesting yeah. than I expected. Yeah, I love this. 
This is uh, it. Okay, no, ginger. Uh, t- t- We've t- gotten t- there. A ginger and citrus peel would be kind of interesting. It would be exquisite. I mean, there's there's no question. We, we're, we're good. We're done. <laughs> we're done. Like this, this, you win awards with this shit. You, you come in with the triple IPA that has citrus and ginger notes. You win. You win it. That's how it goes, Eric. That, that's what's up. I mean, that's, this is happening. Here. It's so bonkers out there that like it, people would love it. Exactly. So, um, so let's, let's go into our, let's, let's, let's consider our hardcore styles, right? So we have a triple IPA. Yep. Now, do we, uh, be, there's, there's fermentation aspects like to the triples and quads. I'm not interested in making you do it. Like uh, that doesn't sound like fun to me. There's no, I mean, what's the difference? There's just more. Is it, is it just more ingredients? Yeah, no, uh, triple just means you're, you're doubling the, the recipes. You're like you're, you're adding oh. more AB, it's higher ABV, it's okay. higher. I, I thought I, I thought it was a multi. I thought it was a multiple for like, like a multiple fermentation process, a cycle no, of fermentation. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. That, well, here that, that's decoction mashing, where you're pulling out and putting back in. Pulling so out here, back. triple IPA. Yep. I'm also going to suggest a triple. So that's going to be it's going to be heavier, but it's going to have more base. Yep. Exactly, and it's going to be Belgian, so it's going to have some mm-hmm. some novel fruity esters. In addition to this ginger back, dude, this is going to be fucked. Yeah. Here, let's just start here. A triple IPA or a triple, which, yep. you know, just for voting purposes, chat, we're talking about something that has, it's it's in the Belgian continuum, but it's going to have substantial ABV and um, uh, a noteworthy malt approach. Uh, Bella, uh, Bella Loca, when you're talking about the ginseng, at least in this context, we're talking about adding like traditional medicinal herbs. Mm. Oh yeah, the movies. Microbrews, microbrew is more of a category that has to do with who is making it. Yeah. Right. In terms of IPA, that just means uh, India Pale Ale, which is a, a term of art. It goes back a ways. It basically means a beer with considerable hopping yep. now nowadays of course as a flavor profile but back in the day an ipa would have had traditional hopping to preserve it over a long period yeah because uh when the ships were sailing um uh across the seas they needed to be able to preserve the beer so they exactly found right hops exactly right the beer. well listen and now we know uh orion wrote now we know that we're moving in the right direction um I love the spiced high IBU idea. I'm telling you, this is going to be fucked, but it's yeah. not going to be like our traditional winter warmer type ale where, you know, we're coming in with a, um, a Jolly Roger type. Right. Oh, um, you, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But now that you mentioned this, I was at the grocery store and I saw Jolly Roger in cans, the Jolly Roger yeah. Christmas in cans. No, they did it. It is because Jolly, it is because Maritime is subject to the same exact, uh, market limitations is everyone else. Exactly. So, 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 fam, you know, broadly writ, precious channel. Um, if you start to see microbreweries going to this four tall can system, it's because there is an aluminum shortage. Like so many other things. Yeah. This is actually a supply chain issue. Aluminum is in available in limited quantities. And so if they do four tall cans, they're producing about the same amount, right? Mm -hmm. But they're using less overall aluminum. It's a cost saving measure and it is altered. It has altered the framework for microbrewing. Right. Right. Yes. For real. Tobias, did you already finish? Did you already finish your drink? In the, the, listen, the punk IPA is fantastic. It is. Uh, if, no, I don't. I don't think I've introduced you to it, and that's a uh, shame on me because it's one of my favorite breweries. Now, Eric, or Scottish brewery, utterly oh, no, fantastic. Indeed. Now, Eric, would you like to discuss with Grimsworth here? Why not use glass bottles instead? Um, they're just more expensive. Even uh, literally, it's just an expense thing. Um, it's easier to, and it's quicker to do canning. 
Um, and uh, one of the things that doesn't have to happen uh, is you don't have to buy a bottling system at your brewery. There are mobile canning units. They come in like the giant, like um, it's UPS a truck. Trucks. It's a, it looks like a UPS truck. They back it right up to your brewery and you just put the, put the hose in and they no, can it. Exactly. I mean, think about like a fire truck. Yep. Like the way that it is hooked into a, a hydrant. Basically, when you this truck goes up to the brewery, it isn't even a piece of equipment they need to own. Right. The canning and, line itself can be a service that you rent. Yep, exactly. And canning lines to buy one, they're incredibly expensive. So yeah. it's just Samotep, to have somebody Samotep is saying that they know a few breweries that have rent short on brown glass and have had to switch to green glass. Yeah. For sure. No, I mean, these are all the limitations. Green glass, as, my, as far as I understand, doesn't offer the same protections as dark no, glass. No, it's, it's, it's why, um, like, when you get a Heineken, it could be skunked. It, there, if, it, if light touches it, you have the chance uh, to get skunked. But, uh, for, and unless you're Heineken, it's considered an off flavor. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Right? Right? Yeah, Heineken's own that. They, oh, yeah, Neekman the, Neekman has the rest of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Orion Rogue says, after better taps, a home bottling um, gun... And a home canner. So the bottling gun, that's yep. the CO2 gun, right? Yep. But they also, uh, Josh and I were talking about this a little bit before um, the show. They now make home canners that you can get. They're like 400 bucks, but you can literally can well, at but, your house. But even, even in the before times, um, yep. depending like uh, Old Stove, there's yep. a few places that are essentially offering, they would call them crowlers. Yep. Right? And yeah, essentially- two, two, beer, two Beers is doing it. Our friends, two Beers yeah, has two it. Beer. Essentially, they're going to, they're going to, it's it's like a growler but it's in an aluminum can and they punch yep. it right down. And yeah. And so for an investment of $400 on their part, they can give you beer to go in a massive can and you're, you're ready to roll. Yeah. Right. Wait a minute. Chaotic. There's a brew dog hotel in Ohio. Wow. We might have to take a trip to Ohio because that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, here, listen. So it, it is 1248 somehow. We got to get to fucking work. Oh, geez, yeah. So, so we're good. So triple, triple IPA. IPA, we know that we're gooch on this. So let's okay. get it. my recipes. Let's get a new one. Add a recipe. All right. Let me prepare my uh, notepad. Good. For that, which we are to receive. Now we have described, it's a triple IPA, right? And so that suggests a range of, I mean, triple IPA means hardcore shit. Yes, it's um. Here, let, let me pull up the. I mean, we're talking about eight to twelve, right? Why do they not have a? Because it's pure madness. Because it's a hostile act. I just I, well, we'll put it as a double and just crank it. Yeah, Mister Movies. Any for a beginner beer, any German beer would be great. Yeah. Um, I mean, how honor Hawker shore, anything from yep. Spaten, like the Spaten Oscillator is fantastic. My, my go-to for anybody. And which is interesting because it's a dark beer and, and people kind of shy away from it because they think of Guinness, but is a uh, Warsteiner Dunkel. I love that beer. Sweet, it's dark, sweet, rich, dark, rich. It's, it's great tasting. It tastes like grapes. Yeah. And uh, see, for me, Dunkel is like inextricable from the glassware. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's like as soon as like the beer and the experience are synonymized, essentially. Absolutely. Alex, it's hard not to love it. Guinness is incredible. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I am not going to say Guinness is bad. I love Guinness, but a lot of people, when when you ask someone, do you like dark beer, and they say no, the, the next question you have to ask them is, was your first dark beer a Guinness? Because that is typically what turns people off to dark beer, because it's not. The same as exactly, but but SRM, as you will learn, precious yep. chat, the color value, right? The lava bond scale, yeah, that is no indication of taste at all. Yep, <laughs> that just has to do like there are lots of dark malts that are sweet and not coffee or chocolate, mm -hmm. right? All right, let's get it. Okay, so oh, yeah, what... obviously, Vorsteiner is an amazing, oh, God, yeah, I mean, it is. It's a beast. It is the one, if I can go to that brewery sometime in my life, I'll be a happy person. Okay, so basically we're talking about double IPA, but we're going to go north in yeah, terms what are, of 
of what ABV. Do we, what do we want to look at for our ABV? Typically around 7.5 to 10%. This holds true for triples as well. Yep. Um, so really, what do we feel like? How do we feel this as if it's a, a greater healing potion? Is it medicinal to knock you out? Or is it just enough alcohol to keep you to keep you in the fight? Right. Yeah. Like you pop it and you're like, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. That would would be the lower end. Is that part of it? Exactly. Is part of it is part of is part of what an extra healing potion is designed to do. In addition to like knitting flesh, Uh, is part uh, of what it's designed to do when you pop it, is it strong? Like because everybody's going to have their own version. The truth is, is that there's nothing standard about this. Right. Every place is going to have its own version of this. Every hedge witch from hell to breakfast is going to say, oh, well, no, I like this bark in it. Yeah. Right? Um, Scarlet, thank you. Uh, the Secret Stash, that is one of our favorite beers as well. So I'm glad you uh, enjoyed that. Oh yeah, Scarlet. Not everybody wants the hops. You know, I mean, not not everybody is, not everybody is interested. Right, and in but that, that's why we stayed away in the from the mouth it too. every you know every, with every sip. Like that's that's legit. But yeah, Jux, this is exactly right. I mean, we're t- we're talking about we have to think about it as a as a cultural artifact. There's no way in hell. There's one version of this. There's going to be a recipe, but everybody is going to think it's going to be like every grandma, right? Every there's every time somebody makes this, they're going to be like, no, I think it's, I put a rock in it. I just have a rock in the bottom of the kettle. I think that's good. It's wholesome, right? There's a minerality. Yeah. Um, so where do we, yeah, did, did you put the, did you got the pull up or? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's up. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, uh, I mean, we don't lose on any of these, but. No, no, no. They, they, it's, it's 10. I mean, let's, let's just be honest with ourselves. It's 10. <laughs> no. All right. All right. This is, this is where the chat goes bonkers. It's great. Yeah. But, but on the ABV, that's going to be what it is. I mean, that's, that's good. That's. It's going it, to, it should kick you in the mouth. Like there, there should be, it's never, I can't, I can't believe this. Like, I don't even know how many of these I've, I've had, like how many of my characters have drunk. Right. Right. And well, we've never thought about the taste of it. Like all the way, like all the way out to the experience of it. Like you're, you, you want to get the HP. And like I said, I always, for some reason, I was always picturing like a fruity type taste mm-hmm. or something like that. My guess is that it's, is that like any other product you purchase, like um, mint and toothpaste or something, right? Mm-hmm. Like any product that you purchase, a big part of the experience is just going to be like, oh, well, that was very minty. So I feel yeah. fresh, right? Right, right, exactly. But it's funny because, I've, you know, when, when you think about uh, a health potion, you just think, oh, it's four dice or X amount of dice, right? Uh-huh. And fours. Yeah. Never once have ever thought about what that thing tastes like. Well, so, this is well, this is balling. All right, here. So let's get. Well, it. Let's let's talk about the color we want this to be. Traditionally, um, a, <coughs> IPAs tend to be lighter, right? Tend to be lighter, but this it doesn't matter. Traditionally, six to fourteen, but we could go anywhere we want with this. True. But it, but six <coughs> to fourteen gives us that spectrum of golden to somewhat yes. medicinal right mm-hmm. if we want to go more towards robitussin nyquil we're looking at 20 and 21 you know yeah i'm gonna say 8 13 24 I, yeah i think that's cool i, I think- don't think that i have a hard time believing that these potions would be that dark um right but I, I, but twenty four puts us into that region, right? Yeah, I, I don't think anything beyond that. I feel mm-hmm. like beyond that is 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 a, a wildly different potion we can do at a later it's time. It's true. Now, Graham Baxter, nothing could bring me more pleasure uh, than to invite you into this sacred space. Mm. Um, we are making an extra healing potion. 
Yeah, Grimsworth, trust me, we've got the edible glitter. You don't got to worry about this. Oh, we God, know all yes. about it. Oh, no. God, God, do you remember? It, was, it made everything better. Yeah, life was good. I was so skeptical at first, and then I'm like, no, this is true. No, and, and it's like, now, if I drink a beer and it doesn't have glitter, I'm like, well, I mean, well, God, this is not a good time investment. We're not, yeah, we're not doing this right. <laughs> Oh, Scarlet, we, we, we did a whole episode where we were messing around with these fucking edible glitters. We had all these violet glitters. Yeah, it was great. Uh, listen, they want the, they're looking for the darkness and by God, they're going to wow, get it. Wow, that's cool. Okay. So I 24, mean, when I look at that, now that's a neat color to me. Yeah. Right? I, uh, well, for a house <laughs> potion, it makes sense. It feels like it's it's hardy and it's substantial. Yeah. Exactly right, because because that's the main thing. It's like you have to think about the like the economic structure this exists in, and it's like well, this one's darker. This one's like a little bit darker. Like you're gonna see they exist sort of in a range of like ah well, you know maybe the healing potion exists at a round of fourteen, and right. you're like nah no right that's not gonna do what I need right, right. I, I need to go for this twenty four. I think it's cool. Yeah. So now we get to talk about IBUs. Now yep. with a triple, your IBUs can be anywhere from 60 all the way up to 120. So 60 is kind of like, oh, this hurts and stings, but I'm, I'm drinking it. 120 is like you are down well, on the ground. Your gut is slashed open. You're looking up at like one last look at life you're pouring you it on the open wound you pour this and you're just gritting so hard that it um that it's reviving you now we have never i don't believe gone north of 100 no and i'm not saying that we need to um, no but I i'm gonna give them because that's gonna we're gonna have to get cryo shots for that well, yeah, but a lot of the, a lot of our favorite beers leverage that, like the Alchemist. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not arguing. I'm not I'm not saying we can't do it. It's real, but I'm saying you put the shot. I mean, tell them what that is. <laughs> so um, there's a couple ways that hops come. One, the the main way that you normally get them is when they're pelletized in a little bag. They're you know maybe the size of uh, a, an eraser head. Um, Another way you get whole hops, which is literally the whole hop off of the vine. They can be either fresh or cryo frozen. Also, yeah. there are injectable hops. They come in a unneedled syringe and they are super, super concentrated. And um, it's an oil. It's a, basically an essential oil of hops. And you just shoot it right in and it just drives your IBUs through the roof. CFCM. Yes, exactly. Omidar, this is the smelling salt piece of the potion. See, to my mind, Eric, that means dry hop. Oh, we're going to dry. No, we are going to. Not only are we going to. We're going to get our bitterness and the IBUs. At boil. The bitterness and IBUs are coming from the boil. Dry. We are absolutely dry hopping the, the crap out of this. You know, as soon as you pull the cork out of this thing, you know what the fuck is up, right? You know that shit is, has become yeah. real. Yep. Um, and if, if, if anyone in the chat ever really wants to get a handle on this type of hop, the best one, one of the best and my favorites that you can go for is Heady Topper, which is made by the Alchemist. If it's you can exquisite. find it. It's exquisite. Yeah. Um, yes, Lane, this is definitely, unfortunately, one of the most anti-Mike beers we could create. Yes. I mean, but the truth is, is that Mike would drink it if his life depended on it. Right, I mean, right. And that, that's what we're talking about, right? Like we're talking about something that you drink because death is the alternative, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Orion Rook says 90 is about as high as you can go without a syringe. And it looks like the chat wants 90. I think we can build 90 without a shot. Yeah, totally. I mean, we've got four hop cages to mess around with, so. Yeah, Graham, I have had, there's black IPAs that go hard. Oh, absolutely. Um, um, War Priest. Let's, yeah, let's check out the recipe for War Priest. I can't. War let, Priest is some on. real shit. Let me get down to the recipe for War Priest. Yeah. So, excuse me while chat. I take five here. minutes. So, here, I'm going to. Uh, obviously, this poll is done. They want 90, and we're going to give it to them. But I'm going to hide that so you can see this, um, this screen here. Yeah, it keeps going. There we go. Yeah. And no, we like IPAs, but we rarely make them on the show. So, this is going to be a treat. Yeah, uh, War Priest was at 75. 
This is so good. Do you remember that psychopath that came to our camp, that came to your Black Raven camp? You're part of it. It was our camp, yeah. Well, no, absolutely. I was like, like an Italian you, you, noble or something. You, uh, I had like that, a garb. Yo, Brenda went all out making that garb. Oh, yeah. That was, that was amazing. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know, you know what might be fun? We should actually do our, we should do this show in our SCA garb in, in next the, time. A hundred percent. Right? I am all um, for it. But but no, so I got, I got uh, dragged out, quote unquote, um, to this thing. And it was... It was exquisite, but what happens is as soon as people find out that you are a brewer and you have taps, yeah, motherfuckers are coming by twenty four seven with their <laughs> horns, yeah, and they want you to fill that horn an unlimited number of times, and then they want to tell you that your meat isn't very good. It's hardcore, yeah. SCA, oh. motherfuckers, oh, yeah. is hardcore. They, they, they don't care about critiquing you for sure. No, it's like it's like they're drunk on what you gave them, and now they're mad. It's yeah, a, it's a very complex. Look, I'm gonna drink all of your mead. Tastes like shit. I don't care. I'm still yeah, drinking. You know what? This isn't a dry <laughs> mead like the ones I like. Blub blub yeah. blub. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, exactly. Dude. Maker death. Exactly right. This free mead isn't good. Also, very wrong. Yeah, actually, and it was good mead. It was just sweet mead. And that no, person see, we just make wanted... sweet. We make sweet meads because it's good. Yeah. That's why. All right. Yeah. Um, um, all right. So, do, so, dude, ABV 10, SRM 24, IBU 90. This is a beast yeah, from be the jump. Here. Okay. So I think this is another one. Let's start talking about our additional ingredients. Do we want to put ginger? Do we want to put citrus? Do we want to, is there, what other? It's got to be ginger. Uh, I, I just have to pull the lever on ginger. What okay. else we add Okay, is that that's any- fine? But ginger, as a medicinal, like yep. as a traditional uh, medicinal, especially in Chinese medicine, like this is in there. So what other? So we could do. Let's do a poll of just ginger. There we go. And then what else do we want to put? Yeah, in? ginger turmeric is actually a very classic medicinal combination as well. Mm. Um, black pepper could be interesting, but it might yeah. be, I don't, I don't, it might That's play well with, with, with the ginger. Peppercorns. Peppercorns. Yeah. Oh, uh, Josh is saying ginseng. Interesting. Orange peel, licorice. Oh, ginger and lime. That's interesting. Something sharp, like a citrus in there. Yeah. Maybe an orange peel or a, a, yeah. a lemon rind. Citrus peel. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna say ginger, solo, ginger, turmeric, uh, ginger and citrus. Right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, now every one of these is a, uh, the truth is that every one of these is actually a winner. Now turmeric offers a unique um, bitterness. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it? Man, it's it's an I would describe turmeric as an earthy bitter. Mm-hmm. So it goes south a bit in terms of its like flavor profile. Okay. The ginger is going to be that spice, and the turmeric is actually going to yeah uh, that bitterness is going to bring it down a little bit. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. Now citrus rind, and then we can also get in with some of this. Um, we can. I, I feel like there's going to be some calls that we can make in terms of uh, some, some skin an orange skin. I would say like a, I would say, honestly, a tangerine skin. Oh, okay. Right. Huh. Yeah. Um, a lot of, uh, well, will turmeric stain your gear tap lines? I mean, it's entirely possible. Um, um, but we come after this stuff we, pretty hardcore. Uh, yeah. So, um, with the Pico, it actually has a really great flushing system now, um, a great cleaning system. So, um, All right here. So we got the ginger turmeric. We're good here. Um, that's going to be a great, it's just going to be a really, really great 
basis. We can come at uh, these citrus flavors when we want to get our fruit tastes in. We can do that via hops. Okay. Yeah. Oh, totally. Oh God, we could go with Amarillo, Belma. Think this about is what I mean. Uh, um... Belma obviously it, it it recommends itself. Yeah. So ginger turmeric is what we're looking for. Okay. So let me put those in the notes. Although I think it's actually turmeric. Tum Not turmeric. Yeah, turmeric. Right? Yeah. Turmeric? Oh, yeah. It's not going to be much. Uh, turmeric is very, as a spice, it's very bitter. You want to be incredibly careful with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bella Loca. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you go to Micro Homebrew. They, they are great over there. It's a cool um, spot. They, they, they sponsor the show. They, um, they are just amazing. And anybody, even if you're not locally, if you're going to be brewing, I'd always recommend go to your local homebrew shop and they're going to really help you out with all the questions you need. And if, yeah, not, yeah. if not, Northern Brewer is the other option. They're a great online site. For sure. Yeah, Northern Brewer is classic too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've been using those guys for 20 years before, like when they used to send out the magazines and there was no internet site for it, right? Like, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, Orion, th the main thing I want out of that um, for the citrus note is I want that nose. Mm -hmm. And so we can get that with a dry hop of Belma without utilizing any actual rind or anything like that, or even during the boil. I just want, much like um, signing bonus, I just want the top part of that glass when you tip that back to give you that part of the experience, right? <clears throat> so for our base malt, the one, the first one I am immediately going to suggest because it just comes to mind for this concept is two row, but the Copeland two row. Yep. So sweet, a, a sweet, a sweet, but clean uh, two row. Um, and actually let's do six row. Yeah, six row, in my opinion, is a much hardier. Exactly. And I think much those hardier two, wheat. Those are the two choices. If we're going to do this right, if we're doing a triple, this is where we're going to go. Yeah, because your base, uh, this is, the, this is the, the primary volume of your grain. It's going to be one of these, and so it's going to set it off. Mm. But six row, we've, we, we do, we have used it. Um, but yeah, six compared to two row, I mean, there's a reason people use two row. Um, and that, and, and that's because it's a much more, um, it's, it's crisp. It's, it's amenable yeah. to the rest of the recipe. Whereas six row has a much stronger identity as yeah. a flavor profile. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And well, this is the thing to keep in mind and, and anything that doesn't, anything that doesn't get put in, keep in mind that the head cannon for this is that every local place, I guarantee you, there is a, uh, a hunched ah. wise woman in any town you could name um, that is over that kettle stirring it. And she knows that this type of potion needs anise or it needs fennel bulb or something like it doesn't work unless you have that in there. And it's like, I can tell you that my potion. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Six row, six row is an, is, is harder core for sure. Yep. I, I think yeah, it's yeah. six row. No, and Orion is correct. The IBU at 90 is such a fucking bastard <laughs> that it's going to be like getting hit in the teeth with a wrench. Yeah. Okay, so what other flavors do we want to add to this beer? Because that, that's going to determine what kind of... Do we want this to be caramel? Do we want it to be sweet? Do we want it to be chocolatey, toffee, um, right. biscuity? Because, because at SRM24, we've got room. Yeah. So right. let's get a good... I mean, th that's really what we want to kind of figure out here. Is what 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 flavors do we uh, want to add? Do we want to add? I mean, we could put roasted barley in for a coffee flavor. Mm -hmm. 
if we want to go more coffee, I wouldn't be, what? Hmm. Yeah, bar, a coffee, like a little bit of a coffee note. Yeah. Makes sense. Do we want that along with the ginger and turmeric? It could work. I mean, my, my expectation is that you tip this back up and you know you're doing it right, right. away, right? Um, we could put an amber malt in. This is going to give us a dry biscuity flavor. There we go. Like a teething biscuit. Uh, yeah. What do you think about wheat? I love wheat. I mean, but does, does it make sense to throw into yeah. something like this? Uh, along with the sixth row, for sure. Yeah, uh, chaotic. I agree. I think with this one, the the malts can be on the background because we're gonna pound everything in the face with all the hops. Yeah, exactly. But just like the conversation that we started the show with, right? Um, I think that we really want, um, if we're gonna be going this far north with IBU, mm -hmm. this the malt underneath this has got to be um, up to the challenge. Yeah. Right. Yeah, God, I love this. I love this channel. Yeah, it, yeah. It, this is the right way to spend a Tuesday. But they're not. But they're not going the the coffee route. Yeah, they're actually going for something a little bit more subtle. Currently. Yep. Um. Although, I mean, wheat is definitely making its presence known. Uh, we'll have to see where it goes. Right. Yeah, I, I, the amber milk is we're not done with malt. No, not on not this because this, this is going to be a monster beer, right? Yeah, Alex, exactly. Coffee would, coffee would offer a different vibe that would be challenging to execute with perfection, right? And it isn't like we couldn't do it or that it wouldn't be interesting, mm -hmm. but you know, at the, you know, as we as we address the the uh, the base, yep, and and raise the bat, you know, right? <laughs> no, they want the amber malt. I think that's cool. We'll so throw some six row in. amber malt, starting to move in the right direction. Now, is this where we come in with the crystal? Yes. So we could. We could use crystal for two things. One, just color alone. Yeah. Or we could use it to add a caramel flavor. Yeah. To and the, the two varieties, basically, right? Yeah. What do you think uh, about a Kara Munich? I love that idea. Um, Kara Munich isn't going to give us much in color. Mm -mm. But that's fine. It'll give us enough. If we use like a Kara Munich 3, maybe. Yeah. So for the for the the crystal, actually, I yeah. Let's let's if we want to do that, let's either use Kara Munich, or we could do ooh a chocolate rye. No, that's not really the chocolate rye. Keep it in mind for a future beverage. Yeah. So what would you say that like that to professionally address the chat, Kara Munich? What would you say the um it's it's uh going to give us a bready caramel flavor. Think about your Oktoberfests. That's where that's getting it's rich, so. syrupy. Yep. Okay, so there's our Kara Munich, and then a crystal. We were thinking. Yep, we can just do a straight crystal, like a crystal sixty or eighty. Mm-hmm. Uh, for color and sweet. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we'd want to. There may be. God, we just used honey, but this would be interesting. Honey would be honey would be interesting in the back because remember, oh, there's going to be a lot happening with the hops and everything else. It might be that we want to um, that we want to use our malts primarily just to build our sweet body, mm. right? Yeah, honey between honey crystal and, and uh, Kara Munich, I think we got some good options here.
Let's take that. Yeah, see where yeah, see where it comes out. Uh, Ryan Rook says, "Do you have access to Kara Rye?" That... I don't know. I'd have to check. We'd have to check with um, with uh, New Bell or uh, Micro. Indeed, Mojo Monkey Lord, eighteen. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Josh is right. Honey, yeah, honey, also- especially honey along with the ginger. I mean, honey is a is an antibacterial, right? Yeah. If you add a honey malt with citrusy hops and ginger turmeric, you're basically making chicken dinner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like a tea, that, right? It's the I'm taste like, of victory. It is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the there's... The fabric of our life. But they're using honey, like, uh, to... Um, there's, there's people that are embalmed in honey. Yeah. But also, you, you, can, you take honey to get rid of allergies as well, right? If you get local honey... Yeah, you exactly. Can take, you can take it, it to has the pollen in there. Yeah. They want the honey malt as the base. Okay, so this is this is actually going to give us a good bed for these hops. Yeah, this is amazing. I am. Do we want to consider any more grains in this, or do we just want to say because, this is good? Because our I think this is here. good. Yeah, this might be good. Three, three substantial rich malts. Because I'm just going to add crystal for color, just, just a little to bit, tune of it a little yeah. bit, just to bring it down. Yep. Yeah. Because if you look, we are already, um, we're at 10%. Oops, that's honey itself. Oh, we could put honey itself in there. Oh, well, not not honey malt, but the actual rich honey. Yeah. I mean, it, look, hun- you mean honey as an addition. Oh, wow. Sort of put it in a mead direction. So, honey, no, it's fine. We don't. Well, know. no, our, if our ABV wasn't already good i would say let's get the rest of the way with honey yeah but our, i think our abv is actually going to be oh it's great we're, we're going to get to 10 easy yeah we're set um i'm going to put some crystal in just what was the color we were going for 24 the color is 24 yeah let's see what a little bit of crystal 80 does there fucking right on. no that's too much crystal Oh yeah, I was just gonna say it was like it was like twenty four point one. It was like right there. No, it was right there, but I don't want to put a pound of it in because that's gonna influence taste. That's too much taste. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Perfect. Oh, you, you bumped it up to the one twenty. Mm-hmm. There you go. Perfect. That's gonna be an intense flavor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right now, it's time to start talking about the hop. Yeah, what do we? What flavors do we want for these hops? So we've already got some spice and we have some earthy bitter. So we're already we're already in a hop profile. And we need to pick big hops too. Like we could go Magnum, which no, is going to be mean ass hops. Brutal. Well, think about this. Uh, we can break it up, right? We're going to break it up because this is this is a triple IPA. So our we're, we can go Magnum for the bittering unit or, or something like that, right? Something high in in it's alpha, true. and true. then thank you so much. Then flavoring and dry hopping can be totally different. Exactly. Now Orion has been advocating for CTZ here for a while. CTZ. It's a hot blend, I think. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. hop ash. Oh, Columbus Tomahawk and Zeus. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a it's a blend. Perfect. So CTZ basically that's going to get us to our bittering fast, yep. and then we and then we can hit it on the top with our uh, dry hops, right? Yep. So Is CTZ put, in the system. Yeah, it's Columbus Tomahawk and Zeus. So so what? How do they describe it? That seems pretty. That seems pretty bassy, like um, big big alphas, but lots of uh, earth. Oh, it's interesting. It's meant to be used for whirlpooling, hot steeping, or dry hopping. Oh, that's that's so the intense. oh, that's that's the aroma version. Excuse me. Yeah, the bittering version. This is different. Um, you're you're going to get earthy, piney, um, uh, spice, cla- classic hop. Flavor. I was just going to say. So that's a classic, clean, bittering hop. Yep. Right, and so that's basically there. That's going to play nice with the ginger turmeric, I think. Uh, yep. Another one, Mag- Magnum is going to be great yeah. because it's very clean and it's very neutral for bittering, right? Yeah. Uh, and so then what's going to come out, it's going to bitter to keep, to fight the sweet, but then right. you have lots of room for after. Yeah, for our flavoring hops and our, our other additions. 
Absolutely. So let's let's give them those two forks to consider. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm familiar with HP for sure. Oh God, yeah, Jesus, HP sauce. Woo! Mm -hmm. It works. Can we get that here? Yeah, yeah. You can get it from a an old start, an yeah. old man. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to find his van in a very specific alley, <laughs> and he's got the HP. He's got the he's got the cans that you gotta pry open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're both good. CTZ is just going to have a lot more presence as a bittering, yep. Um, than the Magnum, which is it's there to it's there to wrestle with the sugar, but CTZ is 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 like a, it's like a, uh, it's a, a team up. It's essentially like a hop, like a hop team up. They they have a lot of battle poses. <laughs> <laughs> what's the um what's god what is the uh the super uh, when you uh, a comic book character throws another a comic book char character up um what's that the team up stuff the move it's the move it's the super something splash or whatever shit never mind fastball special fastball special that's it <laughs> i got you i got you now uh no they want the ctz and by god we're going to give it to them yeah, there you uh, go. So now that we know about the CTZ. You heard about it. Look at that. One ounce brings it up to 83 IBUs. This is what I mean. Who's down with C who's down with CTZ? You know me. <laughs> um, so now that's looking right. Okay, so, so now yeah. let's talk about flavor. What what do we is this where we want to put Belma or do we want to put um uh um gee, oh god what's the one we all love um amarillo well, like have a really nice amarillo flavor so what, what's the amarillo profile um flowery and citrus oh that's right Flo oh it's just uh, it's a beautiful uh, mosaic what you got from mosaic huh. what do they think or what, what, what do they say it is? Like, what's their distillation of mosaic? It's, it's basically, they're saying it's a daughter of Simcoe, which is kind of right. Sim, Simcoe is um, citrusy and pine. Or yeah. just, I, like, I like mosaic more than I like Simcoe, so. Yeah, I think it has a sharper citrus. Mm -hmm. Cit Simcoe a little bit more on the pine, at least in my experience. Did you put Belma in there? Yeah, right on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Belma. We like Belma because we used it in Signing Bonus, which was our, yep. our two beers collab. Hoping to do another collab with them in the new year. Absolutely. Yeah, Simcoe can have that earthy sharpness, that onion vibe for sure. That's true. Yeah, I don't think we lose on any of these. I mean, they're they're no. all really no, they're really all winners. Wonderful. But Amarillo is Amarillo. I think is a very curatorial choice in there. There's some subtle notes as a flavor, and then once we have a flavor hop, then we figure out our our dry hop, right? Or we just dry hop. Yes, we can. Or we could just we could dry hop with, dry hop with Amarillo. The, yeah, but or we could do it this way. We could dry hop with Amarillo and Belma. Right? Yeah. Why? Why not? Yeah. Because you you can get as crazy as you want with these. Like, there's no, no. real limitations. There's no, no, we can't lose. So yeah. that's Amarillo. Okay. Now, uh, for our dry hop. So these are hops that are added, um, you know, to the beer later, like during fermentation, right? Yep. Hey, we and just hit 100 IBUs. <laughs> it's, it's very beastly. Were we going for 90 or 100? 90. Although there are, there are those in the channel who would not fight you. Um, so the dry hop edition, this, this, this is what this imparts is the, uh, is the aroma. A big part of the experience of the dry hop is just going to be because, because they're not being boiled. It doesn't offer the same bitterness. You're getting something else. It's more like an infusion, right? Yep. So if you go to Amarillo, um, you're going to get your uh, floral and citrus. Uh, Belma, 
uh, bright orange specifically. I, unlike other citrus, like quote unquote, like it's very orange, at least in my mm -hmm. experience, or Amarillo and Velma. Yeah. Can you imagine how good that would be? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't that, lose any of this. That gruesome, like that savage combo. Wow. Now you're getting into a potion space. Right. Right. And you hit it with that at the end. Right. And you exactly. pick this thing up. What a monster. Yeah, it's great. What a beast. This is gonna be something real special. I am thrilled. This about is this. out of this is out of control, dude. So now we gotta figure out the right yeast. That's true. Because, and, because they want Amarillo and Belma. They're not even fighting. Like everyone is saying Amarillo. I'm just going to end it. Everyone wants the same one. So okay. Um, in terms of yeast, there's lots of options here. Uh, and then in your mind, don't type it in yet, but in your mind, be thinking of a name. <coughs> So here's what, I mean, we can play around with the yeast on this one, or we cannot. We can say, you know what? We're letting the hops do the talking. Yeah. Or or we can just get crazy. <laughs> the world's our oyster again. Um, that's what's great about this. So um, the first one I'm throwing out is, is going to be regular... Um, uh, American ale. This is smooth, clean, and finished. American ale. Yeah, for for sure. Um, what else can we put into here? Oh, look at this. Check this out. A gluten-free American ale strain. That's interesting. Interesting. You must need something else. All right. Uh, a Northwest ale. Uh, Classic Northwest. Uh -huh. slight, slight fruit flavor, malty, but good body and balance. That's interesting. Um, Digital, I think we were talking a little bit about a Bel doing a Belgian triple beer. go american ale is basically saying hey let's go this way the uh northwest ale is saying hey let's let's get a little bit of fruit vibe in there oh shit there's a west coast ipa they're making now <laughs> huh really well, yeah, cool it, well, it, it's it's such a it's such a big retail category it's gonna yeah. warp the whole back end right yep yep Listen to this balanced neutral flavor with mild esters and allowing for hop character. Yeah, exactly. It would have to, it would have to leave that part alone for the West coast IPA thing to work. Right. Yep. <clears throat> they want the Northwest ale. I'm not going to fight him. Nope. It's 16 to two right now. I don't think American ale is coming up. Now. Uh, we need a name. So let's get it. Wake up juice. Wake Magnum up juice. opus. Oh no. <laughs> this is a health potion. Right? Yeah. So. Positive energy. <laughs> Hail and hearty. I like that. That's good. Extra hop and potion. <laughs> yeah, I mean potion. Of, we know that it's a potion of extra healing for sure. But this yeah. this is this is part of our ritual. Right. So just walk it off. Yeah, I love Walk It Off. Yeah. 
Healing Surge. Very nice. Rafa's pick me up. That's kind of funny. Rub some hops in it. <laughs> no, rub some hops on it. On it, yeah. Pour some tossing in it. Spare the dying. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's great. Classic, classic. Keep there fighting. Yeah. All right. Here, uh, I'm going to let that run. I'll be right back. All right. So what do we have? Okay, so Magnum, oh, Magnum Hoppus, Jesus. H. Allen Hardy, yeah. Allen Hardy, excuse me, walk it off. Healing Surge, prop, rub some hops. <laughs> Jesus. No, no, Spare the Dying is pretty cool, too. Hots on Tank, nice blind cleric. Robert Smith of The Cure? Taup, good to see you, man. I don't know. This is an interesting little battle. Walking off is good. Magnum Hoppus is awesome. God, rub, rub some hops on. They're all really great. We, I don't think we're ever going to lose with any of these choices. Well, it, it's looking a little bit more like a knife fight between walk it off and rub some hops on it. Oh, well, maybe not. That the walk it off's coming out. Walk it off's coming out. There we go. Yeah, Graham, you, you're up twice on here. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, uh, walk it off is killer. Yeah, I love it. Walk it off is such a great name. Can yeah. you? I, well, when I I know that it's a good title, when I can see it on the label. Right, exactly. It, it, it'd be like a two bears label, like big tall letters in the font. <laughs> yeah, walk it off, but it's like all the way around the yeah, yeah exactly the bottle. Well, yep. precious chat, we've done it again. Yeah, my God, uh, another incredible product, another incredible collaborative beverage uh, made by the collective. Uh, thanks so much for rolling through. Of course, we'll be right back with you now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, cyberpunk too. I think at three. So oh, at three, so you might be coming back for some CP. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, let's get uh, let's get a move on. Of course, uh, my friend uh, Mike Rahulik is going to be here to draw Wednesday strip for you. Don't go nowhere. Uh, we'll be right back. Peace.